Hi guys, this is Mrs. Foy, and this is a pre-lab for the Cellular Respiration Lab. So the Cellular Respiration Lab is one of the labs that we call the Dirty Dozen Required AP Bio Labs. Um, this lab is definitely a lab that you would get an essay question from me on, and it is definitely a lab that you would um, get an essay question on in the College Board exam. So it's really important that you understand the concepts of this lab. Now, there was an older version of this lab, and now there's a newer, improved version that uses a little more technology. I'm going to go over both versions with you because I just want to make sure that I cover all my bases so you're prepared. So the question is, are these seeds alive? Right, so here I have some seeds. These are little Alaskan snow peas and they're pea seeds, okay? So are these alive? I mean, they're not moving, they don't really do anything. They look the same. They've been in a drawer in my desk for a long time. Are they alive? Um, and uh, I think if you ask most people, they, they might not know what to say. If I soak these peas, then they become germinated, right? So this is the little root that's coming out of them to be prepared to be planted. So I think if you ask people, if you germinate the seeds, are they alive? I think most people would say, well, yeah, because they could see that they're changing. So that's the question that we're gonna try to answer. Are these dormant peas or non-germinating peas alive? And are the the germinating peas alive. And one of the ways that we could test to see if they were alive is we could see if they're respirating, right? So we know that all living things respirate. And so that's one way we could tell if they were alive. So in the older version of the lab, we created this thing called a germination chamber. And so what we would do, or a respirometer, and what we would do is we would put in this uh, glass, we would put in the thing that we were testing to see if it was respirating. So we would put seeds, we could put non-germinating seeds in here, we could put germinating seeds in here. In this picture you see they, they put a creature, they put an animal, you put a cricket in here. And then the way that you set this up is you know that if this little creature or these peas were respirating, they would be doing basically two things with gases, right? They would either be consuming oxygen, they would be producing CO2, they would be burning glucose. So the way that we, we only have to test one of those ways, right? And the way that this little respirometer test is it tested, if oxygen was being consumed. And so you might say, well, gee, Mrs. Foy, if this little creature here is producing CO2 and consuming oxygen, how are we gonna measure? So what the lab did was it used potassium hydroxide in cotton. And then because this is a very strong base, we would put uh, protective cotton uh, that was non-absorbent between the KOH and the peas or the cricket or whatever we were testing. And the KOH absorbs CO2. So even though this little critter right here is absorbing CO2, the only thing I would be measuring here is the consuming of oxygen. How much oxygen is the critter um, consuming? And so what you do is you actually, this is uh, watertight and airtight here. And what you would actually do is you would submerge this into water. And what happens is, is that it kind of creates a little vacuum. And as this creature in our respiration chamber starts to suck in oxygen, the water level starts to move in. And because, as you can see, this thing is graduated, right? It's got little lines on it. I can make a quantitative measurement and I can measure 
how much oxygen that organism is using. And so that's how these respirometers worked. And that was the basis of the old version of the lab. So what we would do to create a control is we would use something that looked like a pea, but that we knew was not alive, okay? And so we would use these little glass beads and they're about the same size or the same volume as a dormant pea, all right? And so we would use, um, we would use respirating peas that were, we knew they were germinated. We use the dormant peas, same number of dormant peas, um, to, to uh, see if the dormant peas were respirating. And then we use these plastic beads that we knew, actually these are glass, that we knew were not respirating, all right? And that was our, that was our control. And so here is the um, cellular respiration equation. So glucose plus oxygen produces CO2 plus water plus ATP. <clears throat> we took care of the CO2 production, right? Because we had the KOH in there that, that just uh, actually reacts with CO2 and forms a, a precipitate in the cotton and so we don't have to worry about it. We're not measuring the glucose, but we were measuring the oxygen consumed. And so what happens is, is that when you put these respirometers in water, and again, you've got the KOH over here that's absorbing the CO2, the water level starts to go toward the inside of the chamber as whatever is in there is respirating, if it is respirating. And then you can measure um, on the graduated part of this where the water level started and there when it ended up after a certain number of minutes. And so you could measure the water as it goes into the little uh, graduated pipette that I have here, and you could calculate how much oxygen was being used up by whatever was in my chamber. And so we then would graph this. The milliliters of oxygen consumed, which we could measure because as oxygen gets used, the water got sucked up, and we would, we would graph that over time. And so what we found is we found that the germinating seeds were using oxygen, right? So these guys were germinating at 22 degrees, right? So they were using a lot of oxygen over time. The germinating seeds, and these particular ones were corn, at a colder temperature, 12 degrees is pretty cold, right? Because zero is freezing they were also respirating at a very low rate. But what about the non-germinating seeds? What about the seeds that were dormant, right? Well, look, they're respirating too, right? Just at a very low level, which is why we call them dormant. So they are breathing, so to speak. They are using up glucose. And you might say, well, where's the glucose? How, how, are, how are they getting, they're not photosynthesizing. You're right. But the mother plant left some glucose inside this little seed for the little embryo to use. And so it is using up at a very slow rate. It's almost like it's hibernating, but it's using oxygen at a very slow rate. And then an even slower respiration rate is the colder temperature, right? And so that's what we're gonna try to figure out in kind of a new way. So what we're gonna do this year, um, and what we've done for the past couple of years is we don't use the old version, even though the Pearson lab bench goes over the directions for this version. We're gonna use um, some technology and some fancier equipment. And we're going to actually use some carbon dioxide and oxygen probes, all right? So here is a vernier oxygen probe, and it's going to measure oxygen. It's gonna measure the, um, the volume of oxygen in this chamber, okay? And we also have our carbon dioxide probe. So this is carbon dioxide here. 
and it's going to measure carbon dioxide, the gas carbon dioxide gas here. And so what we're going to do is we can put our seeds, we can put our germinated seeds in here or our dormant seeds in here. And you see that it's got two openings, right? Because so I can put my oxygen probe in one of the openings and I can put my CO2 probe in the other. Isn't that cool? So what I can measure is I can measure carbon dioxide produced if it's respirating, right? And I can measure my oxygen consumed. And I could put crickets in here. I can put dormant seeds, non-dormant seeds. Of course, if I put glass beads in, I shouldn't expect any difference, right? So that's exactly what this new version is that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using the vernier probes um, the reason why the College Board doesn't change this is because these probes are very expensive and not all schools are fortunate enough to have them. And so we have them and that's the ones we're going to use because they, it's, it's, a, it's a lot better. Um, but, um, but the College Board doesn't want to mandate that a school would have to have these probes. So that's why they don't change it. So basically, you're going to read through this procedure, right? Because you've got the lab and you're going to see that we're going to be measuring, first of all, is there a difference between the dormant and the germinating seeds? Is there a difference in respiration rate? And is there a difference in the respiration rate on temperature? So depending on um, the circumstances, um, you can also uh, spin off your own ideas of this. So you could look at the, at the number of seeds, you can look at how long they've been germinated, you can look at different kinds of seeds, um, you can look at different conditions. Um, there's lots of different things that you could do with this lab that are pretty cool. But what we're going to do is, again, measure carbon dioxide produced oxygen consumed, and you're gonna graph those, all right? And the slope, the slope of your graph is going to be the rate at the, that the gas is either produced or consumed. So we are going to be looking at three different things for this lab. We're going to look at oxygen consumed over time by both the dormant and the germinated peas. We are going to look at carbon dioxide produced over time in both the dormant and the germinated seeds. And you're going to graph these two um, uh, variables and you're going to calculate the slope of the line. And the slope is the rate. And then we're gonna look at the effect of temperature on the, on the rate of respiration of these, um, of these seeds. So depending on the year and the circumstances, we might do some different variations of this, but that's the basic lab. So Hopefully um, that has been helpful for you. And um, there's questions that you're going to need to answer here. This version of the lab is assuming that you're using a computer to actually, that's actually going to, to uh, produce the graph for you. In other versions, we use the lab quests, which are basically meters, and you'll have to create your own graph, depending on the the year and the circumstances and be able to answer these questions. So that's it and I'll see you in class and hopefully this has been helpful. Don't forget to go to the Pearson lab bench and look through the procedure. Just understand that that was the old fashioned version and we're using the probes this year. See ya.